Hello, and welcome to Geek Street Cafe. So today I'm joined by Garrett, and we're actually going to talk about a pretty awesome discussion. As you guys may have known, and maybe seen on the news, esports has become a bigger and bigger topic. Yep. So Garrett and I decided that we're going to discuss some of the most influential changes that's happened over the season of gaming, and some of the personal experiences that we've had with it. So Garrett, how you doing today? Doing pretty good, dude. So I'm going to start a uh, new tradition of catching people while they're drinking. <laughs> dude, you should. I should. You should. Um, so... For the sake of time, we're actually only going to go over um, about five topics, and then if you guys are interested, we'll probably do a post-episode um, that we get to talk about some of our favorite video games, which I'd love for you guys to check that out, too. You just watch us go on and on and on. Please Anyways, do. Yeah. It will be a long video, though. It will be a long anyway. video. <laughs> Nonetheless. Nonetheless. So, we all know that video games started off as something um, on a 2D platform. And some of the most popular games, obviously everyone knows about the first game, Pong, mm -hmm. and then it went on to go and change the world with Tetris, yes, and uh, Mario, and Pac-Man, and so and, on, and, so, and so, so on. Well, the first game that truly changed gaming, in my opinion, was when games started taking on a 3D appearance. Yes. Number one. So, technically... The first true 3D game was not Doom, yeah, and it wasn't exactly it right. was not Castle Wolfenstein because those mm -hmm. games were still on a 2D platform. Yeah, they were isometric. They were isometric. Hey, check out some other episodes. That's what it were for you guys. Yeah, maybe um, I'll have to do an episode on isometric gaming. Hey, oh, there you go. Um, but the first 3D games really started coming out with the Nintendo 64. Mm -hmm. um, so, Garrett, what yes. is the game that most applied to you in that realm when things first started taking on the 3D platform? Probably Super Mario 64. Okay. By, by far. That was one of the first 3D games I ever really played. And my golly. When I was a kid and I saw those graphics. Woo! <laughs> so, the first 3D game I ever played um, mm -hmm. was Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Oh, yes. I am. Um, Classic. Yes. And that Water was... Temple, no. <laughs> And that was the first thing that like struck out to me was how I was like, I can go in any direction I want. I'm not right. bound by like left, right, and backwards. Mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of the uh, the thing that revolutionized it for me because er earlier all I had played was you know Mega Man or Donkey Kong or Sonic yeah. on that 2D platformer style. Mm -hmm. um, I had a I had a Sega Genesis, so uh, Mario was kind of yeah not in my wheelhouse. Fair enough. Um, but so. 3D games really that's when people said like oh there could be a future in this yes. like you know it can it can leave the arcade mm -hmm. and go into people's homes kind of thing mm -hmm. um, absolutely number two I don't know about you but the first FPS that I played that really like woke me up to the that realm was Medal of Honor really? I played Medal of Honor Frontline and that was the first FPS I ever had mine was a uh, Golden Eye yeah. For Nintendo 64. Mm. Ooh, buddy. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of hours logged into that. Oh, yeah. I did. Oh, gosh. I actually had Medal of Honor for the PlayStation 2 before I got Goldeneye. Oh, really? Yeah. So it was kind of backwards for me. Yeah. Um, but I think all of us would agree that if there were to be one game named that changed the world for FPS, mm -hmm. Halo. Halo, definitely. Like, not far. until that time, F, like, the first-person shooter genre was not popular mm -hmm. much. Yeah, it was it was out there, but it, it was out there. It wasn't there. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't solidified. Yeah. Um, because it had no meat. It had nothing, like, really interesting about it. Um, actually, I think when Halo came out, the games that were popular were, like, the driver games. So, mm -hmm. Turismo, NASCAR... Midtown Madness. Midtown Madness. <laughs> Need for Speed Underground. Yep. Burnout. Burnout. Burnout 3. Still the best burnout of all time. Just, um, so driving games were the thing. Like, you you were the cool kids if you had yeah. a driving game. Oh, yeah. Um, 
And so once Halo just hit the, you know, hit the market, everyone was like, oh my gosh, you can do stuff. There are so much to do. <laughs> Number three. I would say that one of the things that really drove games forward for several years was the idea of theatrical gaming. Yeah. Which a lot of people don't know that genre as well, but it's the idea that you're you are driving a story with the games, mm. and that involves a lot of cutscenes, a lot of uh, choice changing decisions. Yeah. Something that it's almost like you're trying to watch a movie. Yeah. Um, what now? What game would you say stuck out in that? particular genre. Well, for me, it started out with the Metal Metal Gear series. Mm -hmm. you know, Definitely. You know, you had Metal Gear Solid, the original, mm -hmm. which did not have as many cutscenes, but by the time you hit four, it was oh, almost yeah. all cutscenes. It was a movie. Yeah. You were it was wonderful. I loved every second of it. Do not get me wrong. That is my favorite series. Mm -hmm. So, um, I played the fucking fantasy series. Fair enough. And that was, like, that had to be it for me. That was the, the theatrical game of Especially Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. You know, I think about half the game involved a cutscene. Mm -hmm. um, but then you see that still, even today. Like, a yeah. lot of people would say, like, that it kind of died out, but it really hasn't. No, like, The Last of Us yeah. is essentially a theatrical game. I mean, the Telltale um, series. The Telltale series. It's all theatrical. It's all theatrical. You, you know, don't you're do You're doing much. your own choice. Yeah. The Mass Effect series. The Mass Effect series. Um, or just about any other game in that Uncharted section. Uncharted all of the Uncharted um, games uh, there was one other one that I thought of oh well um, but yeah there's several others that fall into that um, into that idea oh the Tomb Raider series mm -hmm. the new Tomb Raider series definitely um, we'll really see. falls into that oh yeah oh and of course the old Nice and the Republic games yeah those were some of the I mean correct me if I'm wrong, but in my opinion, the original theatrical games. Definitely. Number four. So the next one that really sticks out to me, um, and has been of the most recent in my opinion, mm -hmm. is the indie gaming series. Yes. Like the idea of mm -hmm. the indie gaming world, which was unlocked by Steam. Yeah. Like Steam really kind of opened that up for everybody. And to be honest, it's really taken over the market. You know, I mean, how many early access games are out there right now? How many Kickstarter pages are out there right now? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it is literally taking over the market. You know, especially it started with Minecraft, in my opinion. Really? In my opinion. You know, that was one of the first real indie games that I had heard of. Mm -hmm. You know, that was like a small publishing company that got huge. So That's true. I would say, I would, I would have to agree, actually. And now, I mean, everyone knows how successful that's been. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, and it showed that there was a market for it. That yeah. there was a, you know, that people could just do it at home and, you know, make good games and make profit. Yeah, so, and I mean, um, and you've seen things like the RPG Maker yeah. pop up. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen things like... We used to use that community college just down the road, so... Yeah. I mean, um, really. And then you've seen other things, you know, this, I mean, this, like, Steam bleeds indie game right, right now. And, you you know, you've seen stuff like Super Hot mm -hmm. just take off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Another driving game is another mm -hmm. one that just kind of showed up out of nowhere. And that's kind of the beauty of the indie game world, is you never know what's going to just randomly yeah. just appear. There's one thing I will complain about Steam and indie games. Mm -hmm. It's come to the point where there's too many early access games that never get finished. I would say that. You know, and it's taking advantage of people and the market, you know, unfortunately, because there are games that people really want to play, and the developers promise so much, but they never deliver and they leave it there they're trying to get their cash in and cash out yeah so uh, and unfortunately that happens a lot like way too long uh, the other thing that I would say might be happening especially in Steam right now with the indie games is it's oversaturated yes like there's just too many games yeah um, and people don't put any time into it yeah like it's a good I like I wouldn't say that the games aren't good ideas yeah it's just there's not time invested. There's not. I will say one in five, maybe, are yeah. are okay. Yeah, you know, and and mostly, really, I would say mostly it involves time. Yeah, like you can just tell the game hasn't had time put into it. If the developer cares and puts the time and effort into the game, yeah, by all means, I love it. But if it's just like a ham-fisted game just out there like that, yeah. then not. Nah. Nah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, although one of the coolest things that I've seen, and I think definitely falls into the indie game world, is uh, Game Jam. Mm -hmm. Or the, uh, what's the one where they have 24 hours to make? I don't even remember the name of it. Um, if I think about it, I'll put it on the screen, but... Switch um, below. Yes. But, um, but it's, it's basically a competition. Yeah. Um, and Indie Game Jam is one of them, okay. I know, but I, there's another one where basically these developers have 24 hours to make as big of a game as possible. Oh, wow. And ironically, I've seen some of the most quality content come out of that really? than anything else. Number five. And this is the one that I think has probably affected me the most. Mm -hmm. And is also the one that's biggest in the news right now is the MOBA and MMORPG uh, gaming field. And it's also and, taking over the market quite a bit. Yeah. And it so, cannot be on, offline anymore. Oh yeah, it's always online. Um, so if you don't know what that giant string of letters that I just put out there was, MOBA is massive online battlefields or battle arenas. Um, it's basically a style of game where it's it's gladiatorial arena style. League um, of Legends is a good example. Of League that. of Legends is a huge example mm -hmm. um, where two usually random groups of people, mm -hmm. or sometimes you can have guilds or you know groups of friends or whatever, but usually it's two random parties yeah. just have their own characters and they go at each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's your very basic multiplayer style gaming field. Yeah. Um, another one that I thought of was Dota. Of Dota course. 2. Yep, that is quite taken over recently. Um, oh yeah. And like, Dota 2 has kind of owned the MOBA market yeah. until League of Legends. I was gonna say, I mean, more recently I've heard more about Dota 2 than I have League of Legends. Yeah. You know, League of Legends seems to be dropping off a little bit. Just it kind because of, it has a very toxic community. It does. Just saying. League of, League of Legends is a very, very hateful group of people. Um, Again, mostly MOBA. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but then not on. the second one that I put out there was MMORPG which yeah. stands for um, Massive Multiplayer Online Role Playing Game mm -hmm. uh, so essentially it's when a company let's go with um, Blizzard let's, let's, with the, let's, let's, let's start with the king okay. Okay. Um, so let's say Blizzard makes a world yeah. such as I don't know or Warcraft or um the name of the world that also slips in mind right at the moment. <laughs> I'm embarrassed because I played a lot of hours of that game. Anyways, so Blizzard makes a game like World of Warcraft where it has a world generated mm -hmm. and the world continues whether you're there or not. Yep. And that's kind of the most beautiful thing about yeah. an MMO is that even when you're offline, everything else is still happening. Mm -hmm. um, and allows thousands of players to occupy this world and populate it. So. This gaming style, I would say, has kind of stayed pretty constant in the background. Mm -hmm. It had it pops its head up every once in a while, oh, yeah. every time Blizzard releases a new update to World yeah. Warcraft, um, like today. No, not today. A couple days ago. Um, yeah, it's um, it's the most recent one, and it's amazing. Did they have more panels? <laughs> no, they didn't. Okay, um, just make sure. And. I have I like I follow World of Warcraft. I've played well over 200 hours, and that's minuscule compared to what a lot of people play. I'm not yeah, bragging no, I mean, like I'm some king in Blizzard. There are people yeah. that have placed over a thousand hours into that game. Most of their lives, yes, yes. Um, and most of the reason why I don't is because it's a paid MMO. Yeah. Um, where you have to have you know fifteen dollars a month mm -hmm. to be able to keep playing. I will say the free to play market has taken over recently. It has with microtransactions. Yes. Which that's that's fine. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not against it. I mean, as long as it's not pay to win, that's fine. You know, but then there's games that I I, I like to sh tout as a shiny example in the MMO mm -hmm. area is uh, Guild Wars. You Wars. buy it once, you get all the content, you play it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And I would love to play Guild Wars. I haven't bought it yet, um, but I've seen a lot of video content on it, and it looks amazing. It's good. And that, I mean. And there's several other MMOs that most of the MMO world that I spent in was the microtransaction one. Nice. So I played um, Lord of the Rings Online, mm -hmm. where you can play the whole game almost. Yeah. But like some of the side quests, some of the content that you can get extra, yeah. you you pay to unlock more parts of the world, mm -hmm. which is a really neat concept. 
Um, and I know people who have sunk hundreds of dollars into oh, yeah. Lord of the Rings Online, oh, yeah. which is what makes it so successful. Mm -hmm. um, and oh. then, you know, there's other, I mean, there's dozens of popular yeah. MMOs out there. I was going to say, one of my favorite MMOs is uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. Yeah. Because it is free to play now, mm -hmm. but if you use the subscription, you get a lot more content with it. Mm -hmm. But I like it because I can do my own single player story. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, yes, there's people around me, but I don't have to join with people. Mm -hmm. And personally, I like that because I never really played with people, mm -hmm. you know, in the MMO region. Thank you guys for joining us for taking a look at some of the most influential changes in video game history. Um, if you like what you're hearing, make sure you hit that subscribe button, put a comment below, and uh, and we will see you guys next time on Geek Street Cafe. Bye.